Hello and welcome to the Nasty Talks. We are here today to continue our story with Peter, a very steamy story in which we will be talking about threesomes and gangbangs and Tinder. So stay tuned. So we are at part two of our interview with Peter. Hello again and welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me back on the podcast. I really enjoyed our last talk last week. Yeah, me too. Me too. It was really nice. Learning things about you, about your very early sexual life experience. I guess so. (laughs) Yes. And about your relationships and love life. And now I want to know more about the spicy stuff. Have you ever had a threesome? Oh, yeah. I had like a few. Yeah? Okay. Tell Uh, me about it. Yeah, it was like a, a, I had like a couple of threesomes, probably like most with like two guys and one girl. Oh, nice. Probably like four or five to six times. Ooh. I don't really keep count. No, okay. <laughs> but tell me about the memorable one, maybe like the first one or something. Um, I can tell you about like um, me and two girls. Okay. Yeah, that was kind of like a, that was like the first threesome I had with two girls. So that was kind of like also interesting. Yeah, for you, of course it is. For me, the other one is more interesting, but yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah, that was like a fun time. It was like back at my place. There was like these two girls I was like drinking with, having a good time with. And then I I didn't expect to like have a threesome with with the two girls. I was like only planning on like hooking up, having sex with like um, one of the girls because I Mm -hmm. already have sex with her before as well. But I guess the girl was like talking to her friend and then I guess... It's on. <laughs> oh, okay. It was not even enough to to handle. I would say I, I handled it very well. I would oh, say. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yes. Yeah, so. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I guess next time will be like a, a foursome with three girls. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. That, that's that's the next goal. Okay. Well, when you do that afterwards, you have to come on the podcast. Okay. All right. That's Perfect. A deal. That's a deal. Okay. Do you want to tell me more about it, maybe? <laughs> It's kind of a little bit blurry, though. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> it was a long night. I see. Everybody was just into each other at that mm-hmm. point. Like, I was fucking this girl while she was, like, licking the girl's pussy and stuff like that. And then, yeah, we just switched a little bit. But, yeah, it was a, it was a successful night. <laughs> oh, that sounds really interesting. And what about the threesomes that you had with a guy and a girl? Um, I would say... Yeah, then we just like, we just fuck the shit out of this girl. <laughs> okay. Every time. But what was it? Were, uh, were there your friends or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, it's, it, like I've done it, done it like with like uh, friends that I knew from way, way back and more recently friends that I met. Like, um, mm-hmm. Okay, um, I just want to know something because to be honest, I haven't tried having threesomes with friends. I had it with my ex-boyfriend, which, you know, we were in a couple and then another girl. But I haven't tried it with friends. So how is it? Does it make it awkward afterwards? Is it kind of like maybe making a better bond between you or? I guess it's just like a funny thing to do together. Okay. But you kind of don't talk about it that much. Or like you don't think about it that much in the moment. No. In the moment, you just like just having a good time. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Okay. And then, uh, like, afterwards, like, maybe a week after, the day after, maybe you, you talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Crack a joke here and there, maybe. Yeah. It, it's just, like, a good a good time anyway. So, in the end, you and your friend having a good time. So, it was, like, a win-win situation for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> but, so, it's not weird in any way. Or is it a bit? Was it for you? Uh, no, it's never been weird for me. Because, like, sex is, is kind of, like, natural for me, I would say. Mm-hmm. That also reminds me of, like, a time... When it was like my birthday, it was like my 19th birthday, I would say, I think. And at the end of the night, there was like me and four friends and a girl. Oh. And she kind of like wanted me and stuff like that. And she also wanted my friend. But she was not that much into like my other friends, I guess. Okay. But she got them anyways. <laughs> I guess after 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 we started it, mm-hmm. got things started. Yeah, then she was like down for everything, I guess. Okay. Interesting. And then there was like one of my friends... He was like so shy, so shy. He was like standing in the in the doorway, looking in. Yeah, I I, I could see on his eyes he he want to join, right? But like yeah. he was like too afraid, I guess for some reason. We oh, even tried to like but... push him in at one point. Mm-hmm. Be like, come on, come on, bro, join mm-hmm. join in. Mm-hmm. Why don't you join in? 
Well, like, I guess he was, like, too afraid. <laughs> maybe he was, why. but maybe it was also... Maybe he liked the cockhold kind of thing. Or, like, just to watch. Like, we didn't think about uh, that at that point. No. We were but just maybe like, he did. We were like, join the fun, bro. Join the fun. Join the fun. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. just don't stand there with your dick yeah. in your hand. Or, like, or whatever he was doing over there, just watching. But, I, like, for me, it would be weird to, like, walk in a room and see, I don't know, four guys having sex with a girl and i would be like uh what is this what do i do now <laughs> it was mainly um three guys max okay and then the other ones it was like just chilling around okay sipping, is that si- better <laughs> sipping smoking and then you just switched sometimes okay because i can see that this is kind of your vibe and this is kind of like something that you do sometimes but It's something that not a lot of people do. So that's why I'm asking all these questions. Because I feel that a lot of people would think, well, how do you... Like, of course you do that in the moment. But what happens the next day? How does it feel? Like, are people acting weird? Are they, like, I don't know, having regrets? Or is there any kind of uncomfortable feeling that can come from something like this? Um, Not that really, I would say. Not for not for myself, at least. No, not for you. But have you experienced that maybe your friends or people that have been in these not really, uh, no. not really gangs, a, gang bangs or whatever? Not really. <laughs> not with my friends, at least. No. Okay. It's kind of also a little bit, uh, I would not say it's taboo, but like you don't talk about it that much afterwards. Okay. It's kind of just something that you do and then you just like... Uh, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it a little bit. Yeah. But like, like we can still talk about it. Mm-hmm. But I think the thing about it with me and the friends that I did it with as well... Uh, I did it like a few times here and there with like a different friends with fr- different girls and stuff like that. It's something that you just do in that moment and then you just don't talk about it that much okay. anymore. You can talk about it, but like it's not being brought up that often though. No. Okay. But like, And that is maybe because it's uncomfortable. It could be. I don't know. I don't know. Not for me though. Not for no. me. I don't mind talking about that at all actually. I guess from my friends, at least, it, they also just think that it is a, a nice thing to do with a bro, I guess. With a bro. <laughs> with a bro. Okay, and what about the girl that was in this situation? Was she friends with you or was she just uh, somebody at the party? Um, she was a friend back then. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just talking about, uh, talking about like the, the birthday time right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, she was a friend, uh, which I also like, uh, fucked uh, like a lot of times back then. And I guess she also fucked like with like a, like a few of my friends as well in the circle at that okay, time. Okay. Okay. So it was kind of like a normal thing then because like she, it was it yeah. was like she already fucked with him, mm-hmm. she already fucked with me, so let's mm-hmm. uh, like everybody's horny right now, let's all fuck together. Okay. I see. I see. Okay, okay. It's not something that happens to me or I think any other people that I have in my circle, so that's why for me it's kind of like interesting to listen about this and to kind of understand how it feels and how how the dynamic works. When you're also doing like stuff like that, right? It can, there's also like fun moments and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, of course. There's also fun moments and there's, yeah, where you can like look back at it and laugh about it afterwards. For example, with okay. my friend standing in the doorway yeah. and stuff like mm-hmm. that, we, we were trying to like uh, hype him up to like, go fuck this girl. Yeah. And we don't know why he didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Like afterwards, the day afterwards and like, um, yeah, we were starting to come up with conclusions. We were like, maybe he's gay. I don't know. Maybe he's like that. Maybe maybe he was like afraid. Maybe Why did he do it? M- maybe he thought that his penis was not as big as the other guys, so he didn't want it to. He felt a bit ashamed of that. Is that something that guys are ashamed of? I would think so. Yeah. But like, I guess in that moment, it's kind of just like, who gives a fuck? Yeah, just but maybe like... he did. Maybe he was not drunk enough to not give a fuck. Everybody at that party was like uh, high on cocaine and stuff like that. Okay. So maybe he he couldn't couldn't get his dick hard. Oh, maybe. Oh, there. yeah, that's I've been also there. A I've been there. I've yeah. been there as well. Also, mm-hmm. like the same night, I was like also like uh, my dick was hard and stuff like that. But like mm-hmm. it also fell down at one yeah. point. So I had to like also like get get, get myself started again. Yeah. Okay. Eventually. Yeah. So yeah, that's also a possibility. Then talking about like funny moments and fun stuff. Have you ever had like an an embarrassing story? about sex, like something that happened to you? I would not say like embarrassing story uh, while we were having sex. Uh, but I remember one time where I was like hooking up with a girl from Tinder, right? Okay. And then I've been eating like some, 
I don't know, it's like some 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 spicy food and stuff like that, right? Oh. So like yeah. we were hitting it off. We were like um over at my friend's place, and then we like then he went outside to like talk to like his now is his girlfriend, uh probably his, his probably gonna be his, his wife as eventually, mm-hmm. but like uh, they went he went out because like there was like some problems with her back then, and then yeah then we had a little bit of alone time and then yeah we smashed real quick. And, like we had intercourse. <laughs> intercourse. <laughs> call, call it whatever you want. <laughs> And then we okay. uh, went back to my place and then, yeah, it, it, it was a good night. But then in the morning, before she was about to leave, my stomach was like hurting so much. <laughs> oh. I was like, shit, I cannot hold it in. <laughs> no. And then I went to the toilet, right? And then I put on some music on my phone. Yeah. And then I also like turned on the fucking water. Yeah. And then, then I, I swear to God, it, it sounded like a, a war. In, oh, no. A yeah. war in the toilet, right? To the point where I was like, I was like, I was laughing my, my ass off myself, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, because I was like, this is so funny. She, th- this is impossible that she not. She th- cannot hear it. Yeah. That she not are able to hear this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I guess, yeah, I guess we didn't talk a lot after that. <laughs> oh, you didn't talk after that. So, <laughs> no. But, oh, okay. But, you know, you could have had a discussion about it and made a joke. No, nah, no, nah, it's fine anyways. No. It was just like a one-time thing anyways. Ah, okay. It was just like a yeah, I want to stand with somebody that you met met on Tinder. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm. But what is your perception about Tinder? Do you usually date on Tinder or not that much anymore? How how is that? Uh, the, uh, I used to use Tinder um, more before, but now it's kind of like I don't like really like that idea about like talking about uh, so, uh, like messaging mess- messaging somebody on Tinder and then then hooking up. Then I just rather just like do it the natural way, just like meeting somebody somewhere. It could be random. It can be like from a group that you're with, yeah. or something like that. I find I find that more interesting. I agree with you because it's a uh, it's this kind of like interaction. You don't plan it in any way. It just happens. It seems like such like a um, sketchy for me with Tinder. Oh, it's I'll Tinder. Say. Yeah, it's like the same thing over and over again. Like you like match with a girl, yeah. and then you like trying to like and want to meet meet up, and then yeah. I was. I still have to ha- have my Tinder, but I, I was thinking about deleting it for the because, because, like, I don't use it that much anymore, and yeah. I'm not thinking I'm gonna use it for a while. But I will probably delete it, and then I will probably install it again in like one year, maybe. Yeah, or, or like in yeah, yeah. Some, some, sometimes. Yeah. Actually, I've been talking with some friends of mine, and I I think I've said this before on the podcast, but I feel like in in this city, like in Unse, there's not there's no nice guys on tinder at all and that's why i deleted mine that's why a lot of my friends deleted their tinders is it's just like you know it's pointless because i've been with a friend of mine in in france and there there were so many like good looking guys you know and like nice people to also have conversations with but not here and then i was just like okay why is that and but now i can see that it's i think because of the mentality of it I think maybe here in Denmark or at least here in this city, people don't feel like is anything special about it. It's the same thing. You just go on the app um, with the purpose of meeting somebody for having sex or for a relationship or for something related to that. So it's kind of forced. It feels kind of forced, right? Yeah, I would say so, I would say so so as well. I would like never, or like I would like to say never. <laughs> no, yeah. But like I probably don't expect to have a girlfriend that I met on Tinder. Nah, never. Mm. That's not my goal. That's not why I use Tinder, I guess. Some do probably. Somebody is like, it's like I don't know if it's like a guy or girl, but like they probably use it for like trying to like meet up with somebody to like get into a relationship. Yeah, I've seen people like that as well. But I guess here in Onsa at least, or I can only talk for myself, I guess, in, yeah. on this one, that I mainly use it just to like, to like hook up with like somebody. It can be like, it, it can also like, turn into like a good friend in the end yeah but i never experienced that actually it's usually less yeah. uh, usually just like a quick hookup that maybe like one time or like a few times and then kind of f- fades out yeah yeah mm-hmm. i agree i have experienced the same and to i be guess honest, people yeah. also live like the fast life <laughs> yeah yeah of course but it's also kind of like you know these hookups like it's kind of you go with that intention also because you can you can say like why you are on tinder and a lot of people do ask you like what are you looking for so then obviously you say what you're looking for and if the other person like matches your interest on what they are looking for then it's like boom okay we're gonna do it but other than that it's there's nothing special with it and to be honest for me 
maybe it's because I'm a girl, I don't know. But I've had that idea also before. I was very much against Tinder because I've had that idea that if I would ever get married and I will have kids and I would have to tell my kids how I met my husband, I wouldn't want to tell them where we matched on Tinder and then we hit it off and then that was it. Like, it just seemed so lame to me. It does, right? It seems yeah. like a lame story. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm also like kind of like a, that that guy who's kind of like um, having a good imagination. So I, I kind of don't want to have like that story to tell my, to tell my like uh, future kids. Yeah. Or at the, at, in your wedding, like if you, if you get married, then it's like at your wedding, you know, and you have to tell them, how did you meet her? You know? And you're like, we matched on Tinder. We had sex a couple of times. Then it, it just like, there was a spark and we hit it off. It sounds a little bit weak. <laughs> yeah. That's like kind of where I'm kind of like more like, um, I would say like the romantic guy mm-hmm. on that point. I kind of like want, want to meet somebody who's like I'm in a relationship. So I'm kind of like special in a different type of way than just like meeting on a dating app. Not the way that I imagined myself meeting up and hooking up with a, a girl and like then starting to like have a relationship with her, potentially marrying her. Yeah. Like you never know where life takes you and you never know what kind of experiences you get from also from Tinder. Maybe at some point it can be something, you know, that can lead to something more. But I think it's more about the perception that you go on the app with that most of the people do they're either bored and they just want to talk with somebody and then they're like okay maybe a little bit of flirting here and there wouldn't ruin anything i think that's mostly women that do that and then guys they're just looking for a hookup and then there's some other people that probably throughout corona uh they were just like okay i really want a relationship but i can't go out and find that so i'm just gonna be on tinder because I've experienced that there were a lot more people during Corona that were looking for relationships or a lot more guys rather than nowadays. And I think, you know, like if you're going with that intention, then it's bound to fail because obviously you, you, you already have that perception in your mind of what you're looking for. And if you don't find that, then you're not even swiping right on that, you know. So then you might actually miss a lot of people that could be really nice in person, but you were just too materialistic in that moment to actually focus on what was really important. I can totally relate, right? Uh, I actually don't use Tinder to like hook up with the girls anymore. Mm. What I just use Tinder for is just like to swipe, just like uh, to have something to do sometimes. Yeah. When you're on the toilet, it's kind of like, what do I do now on my phone? I'll just swipe on Tinder. Or like what I used to do. I was, I was not on the toilet though. They, no, okay. <laughs> I'm probably just in my bed, like a, yeah. a little bit horny maybe. And then I just mm-hmm. swipe a little bit and then there's some matches. And, but I never text girls actually. Okay. There's one thing about me. I usually don't, I'm not the one who's kind of like starting the conversation. I'm usually like, uh, waiting for like the girl to like text me. And why is that? I just feel like a lot of guys are like trying on girls and I'm not going to be that guy. They can try on me and then they they, they can see where it will take take us, I guess. Okay. It's because there's probably, there's actually a reason that I believe that that's why a lot of people, a lot of guys lose interest in girls most of the times. And it's because of the chase. It's because they don't even chase them. In, in a guy's mind, and in, in your mind as well, what is interesting is for you to pursue her and to make her want you. And then if you're not even willing to put that effort into it, then when she is writing you, you feel nice in the moment because you think that she wants you. But then what do you do for it? Nothing. So then that spark is not even going to be there because you're not even trying. Because guys' brains are m- meant to be like that. That's how they're made from old times from when guys were supposed to court girls and you know just uh, ask for their hands and whatever and that is imprinted in our minds still and that is something that we work with right now and if we exclude that from what is working and what is going on in our life then that's i think that is one of the reasons why we don't have that many relationships anymore that a lot of people get divorced that there's like love changes and people don't stay in a relationship for a long time. It is because people get bored, because there's no more flame, because women are independent. That is the problem. 
Of course, they have the right to be independent, but they need to make space for a man. They need to give a man a reason to be in their lives somehow. And a lot of women don't. And I understand also why your perception of it is like that. Why you let women contact you. Because at this point, you're passive. You know that they don't need you. So you might as well know that they want you. And that's why you let them text first, because then you know that they want you. I will probably say, <laughs> yeah, I'll probably say on that point. Yeah. First, uh, first thing first, it's good to see also like there's a lot more of uh, women being independent these days. Because like, if you look back on it, uh, like uh, before, like the forties and stuff like that, yeah. uh, maybe like the fifties, it was ma- mainly like the men who provided for the family. Right. Yeah. And fast forward to 2022, uh, like everybody can be independent. And I find that really, like, uh, really cool as well. There's like yeah. what, how, how it should be. And I, I feel that that is kind of like the thing, uh, and that goes for like both like women and men. It could be nice to have a girl or a guy, but like we kind of don't need it in the end. Like it's and not, that's true. It, yeah. yeah, it's kind of not like the um, main goal. Everybody mm-hmm. in um, this time of age just want to like improve on, on, on themselves. They want to just do better for themselves, feel better for themselves, uh, be creative, just have more time for themselves. And that can also be a barrier. Yeah, if you are if you are a girl, then having like a guy, or if you're mm-hmm. a guy having a girl. That's kind of also why, I, like, for example, with the Tinder, I don't need to like text girls on Tinder. It's not like an important thing for me because, like, first of all, I don't find like the the story that appealing, and also like I had like enough hookups in my life like one night stands and stuff like that so i'm kind of like also over that stage in life so yeah but i still haven't i'm still lingering in there i guess <laughs> yeah for a little bit at this moment <laughs> yeah of course but um i also understand the the you know being independent and all that and it makes sense and i am pro being independent as a woman and also as a man and not needing each other because it's not about needing somebody but it's just more making space for somebody in your life And I think that's what we are having a hard time these days doing. Because as women, we tend to be very feminist and we go all the way into the feminism. We kind of create a barrier and be like, okay, we are women. We can do everything. We can even do it better than men. You know, like we don't need men. So that's why it's kind of like for men, it's kind of like, oh, okay, well, good luck with that. And then they are so passive because of it. It's not just in everybody's life. I think it's a general thing that is happening that kind of creates a whole narrative for the world. So it's not influencing you directly, maybe, but it's influencing you as a subconscious, in a subconscious level, probably. That is my belief on it. And of course, like, that could be, yeah. that could be. I'm not like trying to get a girlfriend or anything. No, yeah. Anymore. Or like, I'm, I'm not looking for that right now that much. If it happens, it happens, you know, but yeah, I'm not course, chasing yeah. it. Which is also healthy because. If you know that you don't need it right now and it's not a priority for you, then obviously you shouldn't spend time on it. But if the right girl comes by or comes, you know, in your life, then I guess you will take the chance and you will take, you know, the initiative in order to make it. Yeah. If she deserves it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So (laughs) Yeah. So, so that is the thing because nowadays I think a lot of men, they're passive and they're like, oh, well, I don't know if I should even go for it, you know, because... She's there, but I'm here and I'm good on my own. So why even bother? <laughs> you know, I think that's also kind of a perception on it that a lot of men have these days, at least here in Denmark. I think I know that in other countries, maybe in uh, uh, I'm from Romania in Romania, they are very sexist and they will hook up with you. But they will lie to you. They will tell you, yes, baby girl, like, I love you and all that. And then two days later after, you know, after you've had sex or something, they're like, okay, bye. And it's that kind of behavior that it's very different from where you see, like, they're not passive. They're very active, but they are very much for themselves. I'd like to say that uh, there is, like, a lot of guys like that still in Denmark, though. This what what is called players, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the players. Yeah. You know, it, then you just like make a girl feel like um, loved and like appreciated, and then you kind of just bail. Yeah. Right after after like, after you, you kind of like um, fucked right. Yeah. Then you kind of got what you want, and then you kind of just move on to the next girl. I didn't do that that much, but like oh, I, that I, much. I <laughs> did that as well mm-hmm. throughout my life, I guess. Um, not with that intention, intention, but like I still just hooked up with like some girls and. 
didn't think that much of it and maybe they were starting to like get feelings but like that was not my intention i guess no but you also didn't make it clear from the beginning i guess a lot of people don't make make things clear in the no. beginning so people have like different ideas of what is going on yeah different expectations also that yeah yeah I think that is also something that maybe should be communicated more when you have a relationship with somebody or when you have like, when you just meet somebody. If you are looking for a relationship, you wouldn't just say, okay, I'm looking for something very serious because that's kind of like, it scares people off. But it's more like if you are not looking for something serious, that's when you should say it. You know, hey, I am at this moment in my life and I am really not looking for anything serious. And then... That should be the clear indicator that if the other person is looking for something serious, then they should back off. I also believe that if you stop chasing a little bit or like having that idea like, oh, oh, I need, I need like a girlfriend. Oh, oh, I need a boyfriend. Mm. Then you will find it. It will just come, it will come to, come, come to you naturally. Yeah. Instead yeah. of like, um, instead of, yeah, focusing on it. Focusing on it and trying to like chase it, like put all your effort into it. To, to, to try to find what you want to find but it will come eventually for you and um that's just that, that is just my experience so yeah just like calm down take your time relax and just like let things happen in life i would probably also say that i will also focus on myself a lot the next one year two years okay because i think i need what <laughs> yeah because that was actually my last question i wanted to ask you what is the plan for your future so I'm kind of like a a person who have like a million plans sometimes. I like to like be in that mindset that I can do everything in life. But what I will do for certain is I'm going to, of course, finish my education, which was like a marketing management. Yeah. And then I'm also like um, fully educated in sales. First of all, build a, book, a good background in like um, both sales and marketing. And then I will like start my own marketing agency. Plus I will make my music as well. And I'm also like thinking about launching a clothing brand, oh, like a custom really cool. clothing brand, uh, okay. where people can be able to design their own clothes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's bit. really cool. Yeah, be their be your own designer, kind of. Like uh, people ca- can at least have like their influence on how their bomber jacket or how their Nike shoe is gonna look like, because yeah. like it's gonna be like different patterns for every single customer. Oh, okay, uh, I think Nike already has that, doesn't it? Something similar. They have something like that. You can choose your own pattern. Mm, they, I yeah. thought, yeah, exactly. I've seen a little bit about that. And lately, I've been really into like this vintage type of like look. Yeah. I, I also like. I mean, it's coming this. back slowly in the in the I, I, trend. I, it really does actually. Yeah. I guess it's also like something to do with like my marketing education. We are like working with something about um, secondhand shops. Mm. Yeah. So so that also put put myself into that mindset about like. Secondhand shops, secondhand clothes. Yeah, sustainability and all mm-hmm. that. That's very important. It's like a big topic, yeah. Yeah. It's like a, about like a, the education and our project yeah. at the moment. So that also made me realize and like I think how cool it is actually. It because is. I never like um, thought about that before. Yeah, it's nice how some like small stuff can change your perception about what you believe in life and what you what what your actions are. Totally. So, yeah, totally. So, it's, so it's really cool. If we're going back to the discussion about sex and relationships and all that, what would be the uh, advice that you would give yourself if you were younger? So to a younger you. So younger me. Yeah. <laughs> Smash some more bitches. <laughs> no, <Nah>. really? <laughs> no, 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 no. I guess my advice would probably be if you don't know the girl that well, always wear protection. Sounds like a good plan. So you don't get STDs and stuff like that because like that's, yeah. Yeah, it's just like annoying to deal with. Have you gotten any STDs? I had uh, some few throughout my days. Yeah, yeah, yeah like like the normal stuff as like um, chlamydia and stuff yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. That's like a like the biggest thing I guess in Denmark. I've actually never got it, so I don't know how it is. I, I like I'm happy. <laughs> it's not that bad, I would say. I never experienced something bad with like STDs, but I just heard like like somebody, a girl, you fucked or something like that. She calls you or texts you. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just got an STD and stuff, and then you maybe like you fucked like a a few days before that or a week, yeah. and of course you didn't use protection, and also like I hate using protection as well because like it's not like the same feeling no. without the condom. No. So so just watch out for for STDs. some girls yeah. out there. Yeah, also that 
I mean, it's maybe also already like a red flag if she's normally fucking around. It could be. It right? could be. <laughs> it could be. I'm happy I gave you some uh, food be. for the thought. It could be, but like, uh, I guess guys don't think about that that much. No, okay. Girls do. <laughs> could be. Uh, yeah, if you say so. I mean, I know I would think, and I know that a lot of my friends would think about it. I don't know about other girls, but I assume a lot do. But I guess it's, it's easy to handle, I guess. Is is that just yeah. like if you get like a chlamydia? I, ha- I haven't gotten it, of course, like in a long time, maybe like five, six years or something like that. Okay, yeah. It's like mainly when I was like between the age of 17 to like 20. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And in that age, I guess people don't really care about stuff anymore. And like really, you know, it's more like, okay, we're just having fun and all that like there's no responsibility there's no protection there's no this and Mm. that so i get it i get it but um anyways that's a really nice thought and um for everybody listening just watch out for chlamydia (laughs) (laughs) watch out for it (laughs) yeah and thank you very much for sharing a lot of stories about your life and sex life and in general who you are it was really nice to have you on the podcast and Maybe we'll have you again when you're going to have like a foursome. I already did that though. <laughs> well, yeah, but you said with the three girls. Oh, yeah. With, with three girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I guess I will be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Looking forward to that. <laughs> and thank you, Peter, for sharing all your nasty stories on our podcast. And for the listeners, if you've enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe to our channel like the episode, give it a share, and we'll see each other in the next episode next Wednesday.